Sports City, Sports City, Chef, you, Chef, you, Sports City, Sports City, Chef, you, Chef, you. <laughs> What's going on, Sports City? It's your boy, Sirius. Back at the helm with another edition of Finger Foods. An exclusive here on Sports City Chefs The Network and SportsCityChefs.com. As I customly say before we get started, if you're not currently a subscriber, I would definitely urge you guys to become a subscriber. Hit that post notification and that bell and get notified every time we post. We are also on a plethora of different social media platforms such as Facebook Instagram, and Twitter. So if you enjoy the content that we bring to you on a regular basis, I would definitely urge you guys to become a subscriber, become a follower, and jump on social media and interact with us. These thoughts and these feelings are those of my own and do not represent the Miami Dolphins, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and, or Sports City Chef as a company. I shoot from the hip, I pull no punches, and I definitely spare no feelings. I wanted to get into what took place in the stadium on, on Sunday night as the Pittsburgh Steelers dropped another close one to the hands of the Miami Dolphins, uh, 16 to 10. Um, and I'm not going to really reinvent the wheel here. You know, Mike Tomlin in his post game press conference said that this was a game of missed opportunities. And I definitely echo that very sentiment. But as I customly do, you know, on these finger food episodes, I wanted to once again compartmentalize some things and kind of go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, And the good, honestly, starts with my defense. The outskirts of that game looked very, very meek and bleak, if you will. Uh, The Miami Dolphins took the opening drive, went right down the field, put the ball in the box, got seven points. Uh, the very next drive, they the next next two drives they managed to move the ball, uh, but set up for three. Uh, so we were down thirteen before we even blinked. Um, and essentially, that was pretty much the bulk of the scoring for the Miami Dolphins. They did secure a, a field goal um, late, but. Ultimately, they were held to 16 points. I saw in-game adjustments from my defensive coordinator and and Tomlin alike. I saw the wheels necessarily turning um, for my linebackers. That's Devin Bush and and Miles Jack. Uh, Robert Spillane chipped in and made some significant contributions covering uh, some running backs out of the backfield and sitting in underneath zones to prevent crossers uh, from Tyreek Hill and, and Jalen Waddle. Um, my secondary corners pretty much held up. Uh, we didn't really get beat over the top, as Mike Tomlin said. Uh, like I said, we kept a lid on it, if you will. Tyreek Hill wasn't running for, for, for millions of yards, so I really felt as though uh, defensively, we kept the lid on it. I felt as though we tackled well. There wasn't a lot of missed tackles, and I felt as though we were, for the most part, gap aware and gap sound. The one thing that I would wish we had um, was turnovers. I, I Tua put the ball in dangerous positions time and time again, and we didn't come down with any one of them. Um, so I guess that would be the thing that I would I would change, which leads me into the bad aspect of things, which again, lack of turnovers, lack of splash. Um, I felt as though we were almost so many times, and I'm using air quotes here, we were almost, you know, to to a tug of our law, getting them sacked or getting them on the ground. Or, you know, negating a a scramble for, for positive yard as we were almost in um in the position to secure a turnover on one of four balls. You know, um we we, we, we were almost. We were almost close to breaking open a, a big play uh offensively there. I, I felt as though offensively 
um, we were literally a, a day late, a dollar short, if you will. Um, and so, again, that, that, that would be the bad for me. I, I felt as though we were a day late and a dollar short on a lot of splash opportunities, both offensively and defensively. The ugly, if you will, if, if, if you want to call it the ugly, would have to be the turnovers. Um, I don't make any allowances for, for turning the ball over at the clip that we, we are. However, I, I will say this. You know, we are in the middle of dealing with a legit rookie quarterback at the position. You know, he's not afraid to push the ball down the field. He sees it. He throws it. He anticipates it. Um, and I and I respect that that's going to bode really well for him moving forward and as his career, you know, takes off. Um, even with the interceptions, we were in position to win that ball game. And we didn't do it. And I guess for me, that was the more frustrating aspect of things. With as as badly as we played situationally, with as badly as we fumbled the ball, if you will, with capitalizing on turnover opportunities, for as bad as we played... um making sure we get touchdowns instead of field goals and understanding the magnitude of the situation, we still could have won that ball game. And we didn't get it done. It's a very difficult pill to swallow. Um, but again, this is why I don't do these finger foods directly after games because my emotions would have been too involved. There is some good on that tape. There is some meat on that bone for us as Stella fans uh, to chew on. The offensive line plays exceptionally well. I tip my cap to those gentlemen. Um, Last week, I wanted Dotson gone. This week, as as I look at the tape, um, he played better. And and I tip my cap to him for that. Matt Canada, I, I I don't know what to do with this guy. I really don't. I saw a statistic that that startled me to my core. The statistic read: Matt Canada has been the offensive coordinator for twenty five games. The Pittsburgh Steelers have scored over twenty five points in only five of those games. This is with Ben Roethlisberger at the helm. This is with the weapons that we currently have. I don't know how much longer of a leash that he has in this in this business. Mike Tomlin was asked in his press conference on Tuesday if he feels the need to make a change, to which he replies, essentially, no. I'm going to keep it a buck. I am sick and tired of coming on here every week for the past two years and having something to say about Matt Canada. I don't want him to be Eric Bieniemy. That's not him. I don't want him to be Sean McVay. That's not him. Heck, I don't even want him to be Dougie Peterson. Um, th- that's not him. But with the talent and the weapons that we have on the offensive side of the football, we have to score more than 16 points a game. Period. We are second to last in the league in points scored. That's unacceptable. That that is really unacceptable. I don't, again, you can't sit there and point to personnel. The personnel that runs your scheme and run your system is there. What are you doing? Pick up a phone, ask somebody for help, phone a friend, use a lifeline, do something. This was a game that I really felt as though we could have taken advantage of on the perimeter and we didn't get it done. 
for all intents and purposes, you when you have George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Pratt Frymuth back, Najee Harris, and you're playing the B and C secondary of a team, you should have been able to light them up like the 4th of July. And we didn't do it. Like, why do we have to run the football on every first down? Everyone. It doesn't matter what formation work we come out in. Jet sweep, I formation, shotgun, 21, 11 personnel. It doesn't matter. The first play of every drive, we are running the football. Why? Stevie Wonder could diagnose that. I'm not a fan of the play calling. I'm not a fan of the selection of plays. I really do wish that we would go a different direction, but it looks like this is the route that Tomlin wants to go in for the 2022 season. I'm just going to sit here every week and, 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 and cry about it because it doesn't look like it's going to change. We turn our attention to the Philadelphia Eagles this weekend. Um, I'm going to need you to pray for me. Like, real talk, if you believe in prayer and good vibes and all that type of stuff, I, I, I need that this week. My wife is an Eagles fan. And she reps hard just like I rep hard. I'm trying to stay married. I'm going to keep it a buck. Last time the Pittsburgh Steelers played the Philadelphia Eagles, I shattered the TV. I'm not trying to do that again. TVs are expensive. We have a child now. I can't be affording them. I can't be going out buying $800 TVs. With that being said, this is the team that is going to cause us a lot of problems. Jalen Hurts, potential MVP candidate, you know, as as we sit here today, they got receivers on the outside and A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith who can take the lid off it, if you will. The tight end Dallas Goddard is one of the best in the business. They got a plethora of different plug-and-play backs, whether it's Miles Sanders, Byron Scott, you know, Kenneth Gainwell. It it, it doesn't matter who they plug in and play at the running back position. We've all seen them gash opponents uh, for big chunks on, on the 2022 NFL season. Defensively, and, you know, just... Jalen, they do it all. Big play slay is out there. Um, they they do it all, man. This this is gonna be a tough out, especially at the link in Philadelphia. I I I don't even know how to make heads or tails out of this one. Like this has the makeup of Buffalo Bills game all over it. It really does. Like, there are three teams that are playing in a league of their own. You know, we don't see Kansas City this year, but we we play in the other two. Buffalo and Philly. This has the making of a repeat of Buffalo. It's going to be an interesting weekend. It's going to be an interesting weekend. With that being said, God bless you guys. Thanks for guys. Thank you guys for rocking out. Um, catch you guys on the next one. Sports city, sports city, chef you, chef you. Sports city, sports city, chef you, chef you.
Sports city, sports city, chef you, chef you. Sports city, sports city, chef you, chef you. Yeah. Cabby. Taj. <laughs>